Hi, my name is Mark and I'm a park ranger with Jefferson County Open Space. Thanks for tuning into our Plant Animal Survivor Series where we will explore how unique adaptations help living things survive and thrive in their habitats. In this video, you'll explore your own habitat and figure out which animals can live there. Before we get started, we need to know two things. What is a habitat? What are adaptations? A habitat is the environment where a plant, animal, or other organism lives. It must contain all the things that an organism needs to survive, including food, water, shelter, air, and space. Some habitats, such as a pond or a river, have a lot of water. Other habitats are drier, such as a grassland or desert. Habitats can also be hot or cold and have many other special characteristics, such as being sunny or shady. Plants and animals can live in so many different habitats, such as grasslands, deserts, ponds, and rivers. But how? How can some animals survive in these areas and other animals cannot? How can a penguin survive in the cold and a rattlesnake cannot? It's because of adaptations. Animals have special body parts and behaviors that allow them to survive in the place they live. Plants and animals use their adaptations to get food, water and air, stay safe and reproduce. Adaptations allow each type of plant or animal to meet their basic needs in their own way. For instance, to see better at night when they are most active, Raccoons have a special reflective layer in their eyes. Adaptations make a species well suited for its habitat. For example, the green color of a grasshopper helps it blend in or be camouflaged in its home in a field. Some organisms behave in certain ways to help them survive. For instance, a hog-nosed snake plays dead when it feels threatened. These are just a few examples of how unique adaptations help living things survive and thrive in their habitats. Do you remember what we said all animals and plants need? food, water, shelter, air, and space. But how do animals and plants find food? Do they go to their local grocery store? <laughs> no. How do animals and plants find shelter? Do they go online and search for a home to live in? Of course not. They must find these things on their own in nature. Now it's time for you to become an investigator. You're gonna figure out which animals can live in your habitat. I'm gonna introduce three animals. Make notes of what each animal needs and their special adaptations. Afterwards, you will head outside to your habitat with an adult and investigate if your habitat has what these animals need to survive. I'm gonna give you a hint. The habitat might be suitable for all or none of the animals I talk about. The first animal is a coyote. A coyote will eat almost anything it can find. Its favorite foods are squirrels, mice, and rabbits. It'll also eat insects and berries. Coyotes don't need much shelter to survive, but will use a den when their pups are born. They get water from creeks, rivers, ponds, and lakes. Their space depends on how much food is around and how many other coyotes are in the area. They can survive in a large or small habitat. Coyotes have large ears for sensing sounds. They can hear a mouse under a foot of snow. The coyote's fur is well camouflaged. Their teeth are long and sharp for grabbing and eating prey. The second animal is a mallard duck. Mallard ducks eat water plants, seeds, worms, snails, and other insects. Their shelter is in cattails and tall grasses along the edge of ponds, lakes, and streams where they also get their water. Mallards live in groups with other ducks but will defend their nesting area during breeding season. Mallard ducks have webbed feet for swimming and hollow bones that help them float and fly. Oily feathers allow water to roll off and help keep them dry. Their beak is like a strainer and keeps food in while letting water out. The final animal is a northern flicker. A flicker's favorite food is ants, which they dig out of the ground with their strong, slightly curved beak. Flickers will also eat seeds and berries, especially in the winter. Flickers use their sharp beak to peck out nesting holes in dead and dying trees. You would think all that pecking would hurt the flicker's head, but a layer of spongy bone in their skull cushions their brain and protects it. They get water from puddles, streams, and ponds. Northern flickers need a lot of space to find the food they need. They drum on noisy objects to advertise their territory. Northern flickers use their beak to peck insects out of tree trunks and branches. Their long, sticky tongue helps them reach food in holes and cracks. 
Now it's time to go outside and investigate your habitat. As you try to decide if one of these animals could live there, think about these questions. Would the adaptations this animal has be useful for getting food, water, shelter, and space in this particular habitat? Does this particular habitat have the types of food, water, and shelter, and space that this animal uses? Explore the habitat. Can you find evidence that the animal lives there? This might include tracks, scat, nest, or shelter. If you decide one of these animals cannot live there, what habitat would be better for it? As you discovered, Animals are adapted to live in certain habitats and need those places to survive. What can you do to help wildlife thrive in their habitats? Here are some ideas. Don't feed animals. Feeding a wild animal can make it sick and change its natural behavior. In some cases, this can cause them to lose their fear of humans and create a dangerous situation for both people and the animal. View wildlife from a distance. Animals need plenty of space to meet their basic needs and can feel threatened and stressed when people get too close. These are only a few ideas. Can you think of any others? You can make a big positive impact by taking steps to keep wildlife and their habitats healthy. On behalf of Jefferson County Open Space, I wanna thank you for joining us. I hope you have fun exploring nature on future adventures and discovering the incredible ways plants and animals are uniquely adapted to survive and thrive in their habitats.